Hi, I want to continue on exploring the difference between uh, 5G and LTE and this time I would like to cover some differences with respect to time division duplexing usage in these standards. My name is uh, Srikant and I am with Nanocell Networks. So uh, TDD has become mainstream from 4G onwards and there's a good reason why it attracts a lot of attention. Primarily, it gives a lot of flexibility in adjusting between downlink and uplink. One of the challenges with TDD is that the neighboring base stations have to follow the same downlink uplink configuration as otherwise you would have a downlink uh, being interfered with by an uplink or an uplink being interfered by a downlink transmission. And especially this is probably going to be the most harmful case. Okay, so this becomes a challenge when you want to do very cell specific downlink and uplink configurations. And so in LTE, we don't have this flexibility in the early part of the standards. 5G most likely uh, in the macro cell environment will follow something similar like what has happened in LTE, but of course more not specified directly only by configuration, but choosing to do, though, do so by other means. But where it probably gets more interesting is in some very specific small cell use cases, possibly in FR2, we could have a very few number of users active at a very small number of time with heavy download and uploads at any particular time for which we are going to need a lot more flexibility, okay? So the flexibility in TDD is going to be, you can say more to kind of address even these kinds of situations. A conceptual idea of the various things to be covered in TDD uh, as a wish list uh, comes from a white paper from Ericsson where if you look at it, we have a heavy download and a subsequent ACK, vice versa, TDD accommodating unlicensed band transmissions which are not necessarily starting off uh, at a particular time, uh, low latency applications which can low latency applications which can start at any time during the time frame and lots of slot bundling possibilities. So this just gives us an idea of the various possibilities that is on the wish list of TDD. Not everything is going to be used everywhere, but at least the standards needs to have the framework to kind of prepare for these kinds of things. So if we now look at how the flexible TDD is kind of actualized in 5G NR, uh, the G node B of course is master of all the radio resource management and it has an option where it can do signaling at RRC level as well as at PDCCH level to control the flexibleness in the TDD. Okay, specifically compared to what we have seen in LTE, uh, unlike just having downlink and uplink pieces, which was what was given in the TDD configurations, we now have explicit flexible time periods configurable both at cell level and device level, resulting in a net pattern where we could have flexibility in these kinds of time cells, okay? So this flexibility implies these could be turned around for between downlink and uplink basically by some signaling which comes just before that okay so that's the idea that you don't have to be stuck up first of all with having downlink and uplink you can even create flexible zones where you can turn around very fast okay how do you kind of use these flexible time spots so specifically, you can do it for a group with some new signaling mechanism called slot format indicator. Uh, you can do it for a particular user using the uh, specific PDCCH, CR and TI mechanisms. So you have either per user or for a group of users where you could go and turn that flexible spot into a bunch of downlink and uplink. Okay. So remember that's the ultimate flexibility. Whereas you have your normal downlink uplink splits, 
but you also leave something not quite so planned waiting to react at the time when you get those requests okay so this i think is a significant difference from what we have in lte and overall one of the biggest plus points for the tdd operations in 5g is that in lte uh, we always have a significant delay primarily based on you know certain hark frameworks but i think the tdd framework in 5g is geared up for handling some of the severe low latency cases where you could have you know complete operations both on downlink and uplink completed within a specified time okay so this gives us more flexibility to handle low latency traffic even on tdd and so apart from the flexibility to handle downlink and uplink we also have the flexibility to handle low latency traffic okay so this means in, as an overall package 5g has a lot more flexibility maybe in a macro cell environment we don't need to use that flexibility as much but in a small cell environment with a few users large rf bandwidth you want to get it right and use the downlink and uplink uh, according to the needs so for more information please take a look at our website nanocellnetworks.com thank you